Good morning, everyone. Sorry, we're, we're a few minutes behind on time this morning. We'll just wait for everyone to come into the webinar and then we'll get started in just a moment. It's a little bit earlier today. This is our first time trying at 11.30. Um, so hopefully people were able to get out of their morning meetings a little bit early. It has. It's already thrown <laughs> me off this morning, so I'm sure we can forgive them. Like, wasn't this at 12? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we doing it so, so, so early? It's fine. And I just got in your morning coffee, Jack. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, the early bird gets the worm. Absolutely. All right. I think, shall we get started? Yeah, let's. A couple of minutes behind on time. So let's do it. It's 10.30 in Brisbane. Whoa, yeah. that's actually a really good point. I'm sorry, Brisbane. I didn't, didn't consider you there. It's only 10.30. You'll well... have to watch this with your morning tea. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, let me share my screen and we'll get started. So before we get into the content, um, I'm sure those of you who have been on a webinar with us before have seen this slide a few times, but um, just a reminder that Superhero does not provide financial advice that considers your personal objectives, financial situation, or particular needs, and all investments do carry risks. So please consider carefully before investing. Um, now we will show a few charts today, not too many, but just a reminder that past performance is also not indicative of future performance and that any pictures, graphics, charts, and graphics you see today are provided for illustrative purposes only. So Jack, today we are talking all about investing for your kids. A little bit ironic considering neither of us have kids yet, <laughs> but hopefully one day we will. Um, and it's important to remember um, all of the investment options that we have available for when we do decide to have children. Um, so today we'll cover a bit about what we're seeing going on in the world at the moment. Um, and how that is affecting all of us, um, but particularly those of you with kids. Um, we'll then look at some investment, some investment options with Superhero and then how to set up a minor account with us as well, um, which is a feature that we have available for you on Superhero. We'll move into a little bit of, little bit of a live Q&A at the end as well for you to ask any questions. Uh, throughout the webinar, please feel free to jump in the chat, let us know where you're joining us from um, and have any general conversation as well. We'd love to hear what you think about some of the slides that we're presenting and what you think about the world today as well. Um, if you do have any specific questions that you'd like us to answer throughout or at the end of the webinar, please use the Q&A function, which should be at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little Q&A. So, Jack. Not that you would really know, but we have done our research. And how, we're, how much does it cost to have a child in Australia? Now, Finder um, kind of presented some research that was done by the Australian Institute of Family Studies. And this research was done in 2018. So we're already a few years beyond that now. And we, as we know, prices are not, not slowing down. Um, but their estimate was that having a child costs $8,840 a year. Now, I'm when sure you... some parents would, would uh, <laughs> say it costs far, far more than that figure um, every single year. Like the Absolutely. one, the one adage that always rings true when we talk about kids, right? Is kids are expensive. <laughs> like no matter what you think, like um, you know, I've I've got friends who have recently had kids, siblings, uh, and they're always surprised. Like no, no matter how expensive you you think having a child is, it's always they're always surprise costs, right? associated with really. and I think there's some key factors there like childcare costs like educational costs when they get a little bit older too that really can impact that the graph on the right that you'll see is actually a U.S. statistics chart from Statista and you know the number there is extremely high um, you know in, when you consider that's U.S. dollars as well it's definitely higher than what the study from Australia said and I don't think that that's going down anytime soon so really this slide just shows us that there are significant costs in having a child, um, but also that parents more than ever want to set up their kids for success. Mm. You know, the world is expensive now, whether that's housing, um, I know obviously in Sydney, but but every every city in Australia and regional areas now too, housing affordability is getting, getting tough for all of us, um, whether that's educational costs going up as well, food costs, inflation, you know, we're seeing a lot of this in the news and it's understandable that we're all kind of worried about the future and what that will look like for both ourselves and our kids as well. Exactly. And I think no matter who you are, um, 
having a child is one of those sort of watershed moments, right? Where you kind of look at where you are financially and then it sort of is a great opportunity to look at, you know, what am I doing right? What could I potentially do better? Um, and, and it is sort of a great moment to kind of reassess um, how, how you're tracking because we all want to, you know, do the right thing for our kids, whether hypothetical or real. Absolutely. So we'll move into looking at some of these factors that are impacting costs um, more generally in the world right now. So I'm sure you'd all know this, but bank savings interest rates are very, very low. Um, now, with this, mortgage rates are also very low. We know they're starting to climb a little bit, but these two things kind of do go hand in hand, the, the general interest rate, if we like. So it's kind of good if you've got a mortgage because it means your interest rate is low, but not so great if you've got savings sitting in a bank account because as we can see over time, they've gone down significantly in the past kind of 10 years. And that's an extraordinary chart. You're sort of looking at it, you know, um, as this pretty clearly shows, interest rates are at all-time record lows. We've, we've never seen interest rates here and, and largely abroad as well where they are now. Um, officially 0.1%. Um, there's talk of those potentially going up at some point, um, which could cause uh, homeowners a little bit of strife, paying off a mortgage. But, you know, what it essentially means is if you have cash in the bank, you're potentially getting, you know, 0.1%, 0.5% per annum, um, which is just nothing when yeah. you consider that the cost of living continues, continues to rise, um, you know, far, far quicker than that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think particularly when we start talking about, um, you know, growing wealth, growing wealth for, for our children, um, it's, we're at a particularly sort of unique point in the world um, so it really, I mean, we'll walk through this now, but in terms of inflation and interest rates, what we're seeing now is, is completely unique. Yeah. And there's a note there on the left that said that over the last 12 months up until September, what they call the consumer price index or really the cost of living mm. rose by 3%. So when you compare the fact that costs are rising 3%, but your interest if in cash is you know 0 0.1 to 0.5%, it means if you're sitting with cash in the bank, your wealth is actually decreasing, mm. even though you're you're not spending that money, if that makes sense. So just by just by the nature of having your cash not doing anything or not working for you or not invested, you're actually your borrowing power is decreasing. Which is pretty amazing, considering that you know in many ways you're not doing anything wrong. You're not squandering <laughs> uh, money. You, you're perhaps not spending. You know, frivolous like you're not wasting your cash. And yet simply by sitting there, just over the, the power of time, your power, your purchasing power, get uh, big um, decreases. Um, so it, it sort of underlines that point that we need to sort of take those active steps, um, gen generally speaking, to build wealth. Um, otherwise it will just naturally over time um, decline. Yeah. And just a third point here around house prices, I'm sure again, you've been overwhelmed by the amount of news articles around house prices and wage growth. I know I get targeted by that by that a lot. Um, I've just purchased my first apartment, so about to become um, someone in a lot of debt. <laughs> but as you can see here, house prices in Australia have more than doubled over the past 20 years. Yet, as you can see there, full-time earnings definitely have not spiked. Um, they really haven't done much since... I mean, the graph there goes back to 1970. And while they have increased, definitely nothing compared to the price of house prices. So, you know, people are taking out bigger loans, which means over time they're going to need more money to pay that off. But yet wages just aren't, aren't coming into line. That's right. And again, we kind of see this divergence between, you know, two different things. House, house prices increasing um, by, you know, astronomically in the last sort of 12 months. Uh, wage growth hasn't hasn't been over two and a half percent a year since 2015. Yeah. So, you know, if we're looking at Sydney house prices, they were going up by two and a half percent per month um, at one point earlier this year. So we have sort of two rates of growth completely out of kilter. Um, and again, it just kind of underlines, um, you know, these sort of e external factors that we need to be conscious of as we invest for the long term. Absolutely. So I guess what we really want to know, we've seen a lot of kind of not, well, negatives or, or things that we maybe should be 
thinking about or, or concerned about, but what we really wanna know is how do we reverse this trend? How do we actually do something about it? And what does that mean for us when we invest our money? So, I mean, for those of you who are already investing, I'm sure you know this, but we did wanna cover off that long-term investing um, and particularly when we go into talking about our kids, the earlier you can start, the better. Now, investing, now I see there's a graph on the right there. This is not what the stock market looks like. <laughs> we, <laughs> all wish, we all wish that it did. Um, and look, stock returns since kind of the crash in 2020, they have looked good overall. But the stock market does go up and down. It goes up and down every day, every month, every year. There are certain time periods where, you know, there may be a crash and then things recover. That is the nature of business, the economy, the world, things go up and down. So it's not a straight line up. But we do know that over the past 30 years, the Australian share market has returned an average of 8.55% per annum. Mm. So that's, you know, for example, if you were invested in an ETF that tracked the ASX 200 or the biggest 200 companies in Australia over the last 20 years, you would have seen about an average return of, of that amount. Exactly. And in the US uh, on the S&P 500, we've seen e even greater than that. Um, and while historical returns don't necessarily reflect where we're going in the future, it is sort of, it does underline the point that in investing for the long term, um, you know, can be um, potentially very profitable. Um, and I think that sort of comes back to, you know, what we're talking about today. So when we talk about um, investing for your kid, um, you know, children give us that sort of longer uh, time horizon, that sort of longer time perspective. And when we're thinking about investing for potentially, you know, 18 years or more, um, it's sort of a great op opportunity to, to think about where we're going to put that money and how we can kind of grow it for the long term. So that day-to-day -day volatility doesn't matter as much. Um, we don't have to worry so much, um, you know, about what the market's doing day-to-day, -day. but long-term where, you know, our children, uh, you know, might celebrate their 18th birthday, you know, what's the market going to look like then? Uh, and typically, you know, history would suggest that the market has gone up, you know, significantly over those kind of um, time horizons. Absolutely. And what we can see in this graph here is that if you were to put in $100 a week, for example, for your child, and you invested that over that, that 18 year period, you would eventually have 221000 around $221,000 in that account. Now, when you, what we really want to know is, okay, that's the, my total, but how much of that did I actually gain from investing as opposed to having my money in cash? And on the graph there, you can see that's the light blue. So the light blue is actually the money that you never put in, but that's actually been generated as a result of you having your money invested. And that overall equals 57% of that total bucket that you'd have at the end of 18 years was money you actually didn't have to put in. So I think, you know, I know when I first thought about investing or thought about trading shares, I was almost scared off because I thought, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not a trader. It's, it's this up and down. I've got to be always on the markets. But, you know, now that I've learned more about it, my perspective has changed and it really isn't much harder than putting your money into, let's say, a high interest savings account. If you've got a strategy, you've set up your goals, you know what your budget is, it can really be that simple just to consistently invest over time. And we'll talk about our minor accounts um, in a moment and, and how you can do that regular, small amount investing. You don't have to wait until you've got 10, 20, $30,000. You can do $100 at a time, invest that, and then build, build that wealth that way for your kids. And it shows the power of compounding, right? So, you know, $100 a week to most people isn't, um, you know, isn't a huge amount of money, isn't a prohibitive um, amount of money to invest, but doing it, you know, consistently and for the long term really builds, um, you know, can build really extraordinary returns. Um, and, you know, each year uh, those returns can compound and compound and compound. And the longer uh, you wait to access your capital, you know, the greater those returns can be. Absolutely. So we're going to show you how to set up a minor account with Superhero. But before we did that, we just wanted to cover off some of the investment options that you actually have. 
with superhero. Now, there are more than this, but I guess the two main investment types that people think about when you think about shares um, are individual company shares and exchange traded funds. Um, and with Superhero, we offer this on the Australian share market, so the Australian stock exchange, if you like, um, and also the US market. So you can invest in both Australian and US shares, whether that's individual companies or ETFs, which we'll explain in a minute. You can invest in, in both of those on Superhero and in both of those with your minor account um, that we'll show you how to set up. So look, both of these are, I guess, different strategies, Jack, with individual companies, um, you're, you're picking the stock itself and you'll want to know quite a lot about the individual company, where they're going as a business. Um, you can see some good returns, obviously, if the company goes really, really well. Um, but there also is some risk with individual companies that something might happen to the company that you're unaware of and you're invested and, and it may go down um, as well. So it's important to know when you're investing in an individual company that your returns obviously will be based on the individual performance of that company. That's right. And I mean, yeah, and when we look at these two different options that we have, you know, it is also, I think, a question of uh, how actively um, you're looking to manage your portfolio. So, uh, you know, you may be an investor who likes to sort of keep track of the market, keep track of companies, um, you know, keep up to date with uh, what they're doing, what products they have, um, how they're traveling. Um, you may, on the other hand, you know, be more of a set and forget type of investor. Um, so in that instance, the ETF option could potentially um, be a, uh, you know, a less hands-on approach. Yeah. And an ETF, for those of you that don't know, or an exchange traded fund, is really a basket of companies. That's the easiest way we can explain it. So for example, um, the NASDAQ 100, that is the, the biggest 100 tech companies that are listed on the, the NASDAQ or, yeah, which is a tech exchange in the US, you can actually invest in that through the Aussie share market. So you don't have to individually pick US shares. You could invest in an ETF, for example, as an alternative um, where you'd get access to those top 100 US tech shares and you wouldn't have to individually pick which ones. But with ETFs, what you're doing is you're essentially investing in whether it's a theme or a particular industry, you could get a banking ETF, for example. Um, there's some ETFs in Australia and the US that, that track things like financial technology, electric vehicles. Look, the list goes on. So I would say whatever industry you're excited about or whatever trend you'd like to invest in, there's, there's probably an ETF for it. Um, there's probably five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you know, there's some big providers in Australia, which I would definitely recommend you checking out their websites, the likes of BetaShares, ETF Securities, VanEck, Vanguard. Um, we have all of those ETFs available for you to invest on Superhero. Um, we also have something in your Superhero app called Themes. I don't know whether you've seen it on your Invest dashboard, but really that's our way of showing you what an ETF is actually tracking or investing in. So things like US tech giants, Asia tech giants, um, robotics and artificial intelligence, cybersecurity. So some of these themes you can find and invest in those with Superhero as well. If you do want a bit more of a passive diversified um, option where you don't have to pick individual companies. So it does all, all depend on how active you want to be with your investments and, and what risk return balance you're looking for as well. Exactly. You've got to find what works for you. But, um, you know, the world really is your oyster <laughs> when it comes down to, you know, which way you'd like to go with this. And the other thing to consider, I guess, is, is what you're actually looking for when it comes to your return. Uh, now, look, if you're investing over 18 years, I think most of us would like some, some of both of these, right? So share price growth is obviously great. The value of your money goes up over time. Um, and this is where you're seeing companies that really are growing in size, growing in their revenues over time, gaining more customers. So your goal there is that you invest in a company, it grows, it does well, um, and you're able to sell over time um, at a profit which is great, um, but it is not the only way that you can, I guess, gain value through investing in shares. Um, I think something that a lot of Australian companies do a lot of um, is dividends. And there are some particular industries like banks, um, some of the mining stocks as well, that often will provide dividends um, to consumers. So if you're invested in, in a dividend producing company or ETFs, ETFs also can pay dividends as well. 
um, you can actually gain regular income through those investments. That income with Superhero will go back into your Superhero account as cash available for, for you then to go and invest it again. Um, so two different ways there. You can either sell at a profit um, once your investment has gained over time, or you can gain regular income through dividends. Um, now, both of these are not guaranteed. They may go up and down. Um, dividend normally will go up and down as well, depending on the company's performance for that year. Um, but there are the two different ways that you can, I guess, gain value through investing. That's right. And, and you know, when it, when it comes to dividends, that can be a great way to reinvest back into the companies that, you know, all ETFs uh, that you, you know, are bullish on. You might, uh, you know, get a, a payout from the Commonwealth Bank or BHB, whatever it is. And, and you know, yeah. there is the opportunity then to basically take, you know, the profits that that company has generated to buy more of that company, mm -hmm. which will then in, in turn, hopefully, uh, generate more profits and so forth. And again, we can kind of see that power of compounding over time. Absolutely. Now, I might just go through a few questions while we're on this slide that we're seeing in the chat. Uh, so tax ramifications with ETFs, if you have a profit or loss on sales. So individual companies and ETFs work the same way. So any investment works the same way when it comes to tax. Uh, the best advice I could give you would be to go and check out the ATO website for capital gains tax. Um, so you'll be able to find any information on the ATO website about buying and selling shares. Money Smart is also a really great government website that actually explains the ramifications of owning shares, selling shares, um, and the tax there. So yeah, again, we can't provide you with tax advice, but individual companies and ETFs work the same way when it comes to selling those shares um, and the capital gains or loss that is incurred That's right. as a result of that. You should see a qualified tax accountant um, if you are seeking tax advice. Just from a general point of view, though, um, yeah. you, know, you should be conscious that um, when dividends are pa paid out, um, you know, they can be considered a form of income by the ATO and you may have to pay a marginal tax rate on those. Um, yeah. But again, you know, that's something you should look into for your specific circumstances. Absolutely. And in terms of investing for kids, you as the, the parent of that child, while they're under 18 and with, with our minor accounts, which I'll go into in more detail in a moment, you are still the legal owner of those shares as, as the parent until that child comes of age and you can transfer the shares into their legal name. So while you'll set up the superhero account um, as, as kind of care of the child, you are responsible for any of the tax implications. So for example, if you were to buy, I've got a question about buying Microsoft shares, um, which I'll go through in a second, but if you were to buy Microsoft shares in a minor account for your child, if you held those shares for, let's say five years, then sold those shares, but kept the money in the account for the child, bought another share, you would be responsible if that money is still in that minor account, you as the parent and the legal owner of those shares would be responsible for any tax implications associated. Um, I hope that answers the question, but even though you are setting up an account for your child, you are still the legal owner of those shares and so will be responsible for any tax associated. And I think there's a sort of, um, you know, Ken in the chat has um, sort of raised an interesting point as well. He talks about buying Microsoft shares and, and you know, perhaps, uh, you know, his child uh, might, might be looking to sell in 20 years time. Um, and I think that's sort of an important point to address as well, because if you are investing for, you know, an 18 or, or 20 year um, time frame, then um, obviously when it comes to companies, unless you are going to take a really active approach, then, you know, you probably will be looking to buy companies that uh, will be around in 20 years, that will be growing for 20 years. Um, so I, I, again, it just, you know, kind of depends on your approach. But um, just something to be co conscious of if you're buying for the long term, um, you know, you should con consider that when you're investing uh, on behalf of your kids. Yeah. And essentially, a minor account works the same way as an individual account does with Superhero. So you are still the legal owner. It will be separated from your individual account. So you'll see the investment separately, um, but it works the same way. Um, so just consider what, you, what your own goals are for that as well. Um, now, we do have a couple of questions around, around our company as well and what happens to our company. Now, 
I hope will be available for 18 years and that, that our company will be bigger and better by then. Um, but just, just to confirm, if anything were to happen with Superhero, your shares would just be able to be transferred to another broker. So you wouldn't lose your money. Um, your shares are all held separately to our, to our business operations um, in, a, in a custody structure. So that is the same way a lot of super funds work, um, which are the largest asset holders in the world. So, so no issues there, you'd just be able to transfer to another broker. Um, and let's go on to how to actually set up a minor account. I can see a couple of questions around keeping your shares in a core account versus, versus holding it for your kids in a minor account. So essentially there is no difference in terms of how the shares are held, the implications for tax. I would say the main benefit of holding your shares in a minor account is really just allowing you to Let's say you have three kids. If you wanted to invest $100 per child, set it up that way, have each investment account separate and actually track those investments separately, I would say that is the main benefit. So you can track your investments for each child very specifically. And over time, when they do get to 18, you can transfer those shares and, and have that built up kind of confidence that this is how much I've built for my child over time. So look, there's no legal difference um, except for the fact that you can see and see those shares separately and, and manage your investments separately for each child if you wanted to. Exactly. Essentially, you know, it's helping compartmentalize, um, you yeah. know, your different investments and then, you know, come, come, you know, their 18th birthday, if you wanted to transfer it over to them, it's becomes, you know, somewhat a cleaner process. Absolutely. So we've got a question here. Can I set up one kid's account for all of my grandchildren or do they need to be separate? You could do either. So you could set up a minor account that you wanted for all of your grandchildren. I'm pretty sure you have to put it under one name. So you might want to do that. Um, but again, you're the legal owner. So it's kind of up to you. So you could do one account for all of your children, or you could set up a different account for each child or grandchild if you want to. It's very much up to you that way. All right. So you can see here on the screen, this is what our minor accounts allow you to do. So our minor accounts allow you to invest for your kids. There's no monthly account fees. Um, so similar to our individual account, we don't charge any fees for you to have an account. Um, we have zero brokerage on US shares and ETFs and zero brokerage to buy Australian ETFs as well. Um, you know, we spoke about that $100 at a time strategy, for example. And if you were to deposit $100 weekly, set up even a recurring deposit from your bank account, into each minor account. Um, you could deposit $100 at a time, invest that in an Aussie ETF, and you'd actually pay no brokerage until you decided to sell. Um, so, you know, there's a bunch of different strategies you can have around investing for your kids. We have $5 brokerage on our Australian shares. Deposits are all in real time if they're with pay ID. Um, and you've got access to, to live data and tax reporting as well. And that is in each minor account. So again, you spoke about why a minor account? All of your reporting will also be kept separate if you have a minor account. So you'll be able to see individual reports for each minor account that you have. And that's one, one of the great advantages of, of, of the zero dollar brokerage is that it does allow you to, um, you know, invest uh, small, smaller amounts consistently without eating yeah. into your capital. Absolutely. Now, someone asked here, is there a transfer fee when you want to transfer your shares to your children? It is called an off-market transfer. So if you'd like to see the fit, there is a small fee for that. Um, that fee is in our fee schedule because we actually have to legally transfer those shares over. It's not just as simple as flicking a switch. There is a legal process that needs to happen. So there is a small fee for that. Now, hopefully, as you've been building this investment up for years, it will you know, not matter as much that there is a small fee associated, but just to be upfront, there is a small fee. Um, it's called an off-market transfer and... Yeah, you'll need to do that um, and legally transfer those shares over to your child when they turn 18. The other way to do it is if you wanted to give your child that house deposit or that car deposit, you could simply sell those shares if you wanted to give them um, that investment as cash, I guess. Um, but if you want to transfer the shares directly over, that'll be an off-market transfer. That's right. And there's a great comment in the chat uh, from Janine. And, and she says, my son has started a part-time job and wants to start investing. But as he is 16, he can't do that in his name. Supera's minor account provides him the opportunity to do that through me. Correct. Um, and that's just another one of the sort of use cases for it. Um, and can also sort of be, you know, outside of a purely financial um, 
point of view, mm. it can also be a, a great way to interact with your kids and educate financial them. education, you know, to sort of walk them through in yeah. sort of a safe, secure way. I mean, the account is in your name, um, <laughs> you know, and you can kind of walk them through what it is to invest, what it is to invest consistently yeah. and sort of have those conversations um, with kind of, you know, using real money, which, you know, can be so valuable. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there is, a, I think there's an ASX share market game they can also play, but I don't think there's anything as real in terms of education as having a small amount of money that that child can actually go and learn from mm -hmm. with your guidance, um, you know, kind of beats learning through Monopoly, right? I think that was all of our, our best financial education was just trying to buy houses at rapid speed with Monopoly. But I think this, this gives kids a really great foray with your help um, into investing for the first time. Um, just there's there's a quick question again here about if we go under I can't I won't answer that in full detail um, for you right now but if you go to our website um, on our learn page we actually have have an article around all about how your shares are protected um, you can also go on live chat and ask any questions that you have to our customer service team they all sit here in Sydney um, and they'll be able to answer that question in full detail um, there is no risk that you'll lose your shares but if you want to know more please head to our website or on live chat as well a uh, quick question here around US shares. Um, there are there's a tax form essentially that you need to fill out when you're doing US trading or investing directly into US shares. We do that automatically for you through we've got a little questionnaire that you'll see pop up in your account at some point. You've probably already done it if you're investing with us. Um, so it's a little pop up that you'll see in the app at some point if you are investing in US shares. And it asks pretty much what's your tax file number and where are you a tax resident and and we'll complete that for you so it's all done automatically you don't have to fill out anything else specifically and finally which is which is very important is how do you actually set up a minor account with superhero um so you can set up a minor account through either your desktop your mobile web or through your mobile app with superhero and you do that from your profile so if you log into your app and go to profile you'll see a button that says add new account so that is the button that you'll want to click if you want to set up um, a minor account and then you can see there that you can actually go through select minor account you put in the miner's name and their date of birth um, and then you'll you'll be in and you'll have a minor account um, and you'll actually see that when you go into your superhero app next to your name at the top of the app, you'll be able to see a drop down arrow and you'll be able to toggle between the different accounts there. So you'll see the different names, whether it's Rachel, Rachel's child one, Rachel's ch child two, you'll be able to toggle between those separate accounts, but it's all within the same login. Mm. So you log into your app once and you can toggle between your accounts um, and all of your minor accounts too. And as you can see there, all of the same investment options as you have with your individual account. You will need to deposit separately into accounts. So, you know, if you want to put money into your minor account, you'll need to put that specifically into your minor account as opposed to your, your personal account. So we just keep it all separate so that you can track those, those deposits and investments separately. Um, it really helps for reporting and for activity purposes as well. Yeah, and gives you sort of a great overview, um, you know, and something to show them as well. You know, this is, if you choose, you know, in the example with the 16-year-old uh, son, you yeah. know, you can go, this is uh, how your investments are working for you. This is how they've done, you know, this year. Um, and really just gives a very clean overview of um, how they're tracking. Absolutely. Now, someone said if you needed to close a minor account, um, would you fold it into your account? I would say go on our live chat and ask them that question. I'd say that's definitely possible considering you are the legal owner. But if you want to pop onto our website and ask live chat, I'm sure they'll they'll help you um, with that. And I see there's another question about that as well. So really good point. Um, feel free to pop on our live chat uh, on our website. The guys will be, they'll be on there ready to answer your question. They're on a that. very friendly team. They absolutely are. And a question here, can you move money from one ETF to another? If you want to move money between ETFs, you'll simply need to sell the one ETF you want to sell. Again, you don't have to sell your entire holding. You could sell half of it and then and then buy another ETF. Uh, and minimum purchase limits, the same as with our individual accounts. So it's $100 Aussie for Aussie shares and ETFs is the minimum investment. And then for US shares and ETFs, it's a $50 US dollar minimum investment. 
Um, the important thing to note with US shares is that, and this is just the way the way it works, it's not a superhero specific thing, but you can buy fractional shares. And what that means is there's a lot of shares in the US that are thousands of dollars per share. Yeah, uh, I think companies Amazon, like Amazon, yeah. um, Warren Buffett's uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, yeah. you know, they can run up into, I mean, in that instance, $400,000 for a share, $200,000 for a share. <laughs> so you may not have that on you. I certainly don't, um, but you could buy a fraction of that share for you know the uh, the uh, amount that you have on hand yeah so from 50 yeah 50 dollars from 50 us dollars exactly yeah and i think that's the end of our presentation so i'll pop back to here and i'll just see if there's any questions specifically in the q and a i'd see there's some really good feedback um, as well guys so if i haven't answered your question specifically but you have provided feedback we'll definitely take all of that to our product team um, and let them know uh, i'm just going to stop I might stop sharing my screen actually, just so that we can see the Q and A. Uh, so someone asked how to make the transition of a minor account. They'll need to be 18 to do that. Um, and as I said, it's called an off-market transfer. Um, you can do that by contacting us on live chat or on email at hello at superhero.com.au. Um, there is a small fee. It's all outlined in our fee schedule on the website as well. Um, there will be a recording of this webinar as well if you'd like to go back and watch it later. It'll be available on our YouTube channel from either today or tomorrow, but you should also get an email with that recording link as well. Um, so don't worry about that. Just reading the other questions. I think we've answered most, most of those. And actually good point from Nick there. So Nick doesn't have an account yet. Um, and he's asking that if he doesn't have an active account with us yet as an individual, can he still just set up a minor account? So Nick, the way minor accounts work is you'll have to have an individual account as your overall login. So you will need to sign up and that's just for identification and verification purposes. We need to have your details as you will be the legal owner of any shares within that account, um, even if that is a minor account. So we still need your details. Um, the onboarding process is super smooth, so it won't take you long, um, but you will need to set up an overall account or an individual account, but you don't need to have any individual investments in order to set up a minor account. So even if you haven't put any money into, into your individual account, you'll be able to actually set up a minor account. Um, and invest for your kids, even if you, you don't want to individually. So yes, you can on that one. Um, another question from Elise, can the legal owner be a corporate trustee? Coming soon. <laughs> um, so yes, we will be opening up trust company and SMSF investment accounts very, very shortly. Um, if you have a superhero account, make sure you're subscribed to our emails. If you're not, let live chat know and, and they'll get you back on board. But we will be launching that very, very soon. And we'll let you know, um, let all of our customers know as soon as that is available. Um, and you will be able to invest with a company trustee. And I just saw one other question. Uh, are the charges the same for an individual account as a minor account? Yes, they are. So no monthly account fees, brokerage fees are the same. So $0 for US shares and ETFs, $0 to buy Aussie ETFs, um, and just a $5 brokerage fee when you sell your Aussie sell your Aussie ETFs and buy and sell Aussie shares. Sorry, it's a bit complicated there, but on our invest page on our website, we actually break that down very specifically. So you can you can see all of that as well. Um, and a few questions here on ETFs. Unfortunately, we don't have the setup of an automatic purchase of shares just yet. Um, we know it's a requested feature, so watch this space. But what you can do is set up an automatic deposit, for example, of $100, $200 um, into that account, whether that's your individual or minor account. And then you can go and invest in that ETF through dollar cost averaging if you want to, which just means that you're investing small amounts regularly to kind of even out the ups and downs in the share market. Um, and yeah, you can you can invest that over time and you won't be charged any brokerage if you're buying into an ETF. Then if you want to sell it all as one later, you just get charged one $5 fee at the end. Um, so definitely a way you can, you can do that regularly over time without fees. 
Um, and, and if there are any questions you've you've got today that uh, you know we haven't got around to, you know, yeah. do make sure you check out the uh, superhero website. Um, there's a learn page there that covers a lot of this stuff. There's also a support page with a lot, a lot of FAQs, which we get, you know, clearly frequently. Um, so if you go there, uh, you should be able to find the answer. And if not, again, there's a live chat feature. You can speak to a, a real person here in Sydney and they can um, walk you through whatever your query is. Definitely. I think we'll, we'll probably leave it there um, for today. I know there were a couple more questions there, so we will try and get back to you. But if you do have questions, I'd suggest please just go to our live chat. They have all of the very specific answers that we might we might not have. We, we've tried, we try our best, um, but yeah, please, um, please just pop to live chat um, and we'll be able to answer that for you. Um, there's some really good questions coming through it and I know they'll be able to answer it um, straight away for you. So yeah, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, and yeah, good luck investing for your kids and we'll see you again shortly in our next webinar. I think we've got some pretty exciting ones coming up. Um, all about what we've seen this year, performance of ETFs, um, looking to do some some good education around ethical investing going into 2022 as well. So exactly, um, and yeah, thanks so much for attending. It's great to see um, you know the amount of interest both in this webinar and in investing for your kids generally. I think you know it speaks to how how many parents are looking uh, mm. to do it, and you know trying to have those kind of financial conversations with their with your kids. So um, I think that's really encouraging and. Obviously, you know, any steps you take now, um, you know, both from setting your child up financially to also sort of giving them that basic financial education can be so important and so valuable down the track. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Right. Thank you. Bye.